Good evening, my name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a medium-sized company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist in development. Tonight, I'd like to speak to you about the recent disturbing reports that have come out about CO2 being pumped into the atmosphere. So, I created a report on this that I will share with you uh, in the comments section. This report is right here. This particular tab deals with resources. We can look at one of these reports. It is a report that everybody was surprised it came out during the Trump administration, but it's just simply the fourth quadrennial every four-year uh, national climate assessment. It shows that there will be hundreds of billions of dollars in damage by 2100 to the United States, as much as 10% of the economy. Um, now, um, other people who looked at this more closely would say that their estimates for 2100 are more likely to happen much, much, much sooner. So soon that people arguing that we may have um, mass starvation to the point where the majority of humans on Earth will starve to death within a decade or two. Therefore, everyone listening to this may not be able to avoid it, so we must act. <clears throat> and acting is simple. All we have to do is two things. One, we have to convert from fossil fuel to renewable energy. If we don't do that, uh, the costs are going to be um, uh, inconceivable. There, Florida will be entirely underwater, etc. So let me get into the details of that in a minute. So the point is, we can solve this. Uh, according to Elon Musk, a 100 square mile area of the United States could generate all the energy the U.S. requires. According to my own studies, if you had a house running on all electric appliances, all electric AC and heat, if it was possible to do so, if you had a um, an office building where you put solar panels on the building and uh, you did it at home, you used an electric car, grew your own food, you could basically stop producing carbon personally, you and all of your co-workers, uh, it, along with the idea that we would also build a national electric infrastructure that was solar electric. And uh, the figure I heard most recently to do this <coughs> is $4 trillion. Um, so if we can do this in one year, um, the, we will save millions of species, we will save um, thousands of miles of coastline, etc., etc., if we can do it in two years, so much more is lost. But when we get to five years or ten years, uh, we get to the point where we may go into a hot house earth. So to try to explain the hot house earth effect to you, this depicts, this picture here is the earth uh, during human uh, period of uh, occupation. Uh, in 100,000 year cycles, going down to 5 degrees below the present uh, temperature in centigrade or about 8 degrees Fahrenheit, and coming to where we are now. Then up here we have the hot house earth. In these types of temperatures, mammals have basically not existed historically, <coughs> although reptiles have. And the key problem is that uh, we don't have thousands of years for this process to occur. This process will occur in decades, so the vast majority of plants and wildlife won't have any chance to adapt to it. Well, if you listen to the media and you hear about plans for California to go to carbon neutral by 2045, and you hear um, that uh, there are plans to reduce certain emissions by 2030 or whatnot, this is probably too late. And that's what I want to talk to you about. So these are some of the uh, systems that can produce some positive feedback, which means that some of these problems will make the others worse. So if we lose ice sheet, which are these four guys up here, five guys, um, not only do we get sea level rise, uh, where uh, we have less land to live on and to make food on. Um, so you have a shrinking area within which to operate and uh, uh, shrinking resources, which is what happens when you start having heat. Um, so these five systems, if they uh, collapse, will reduce the amount of uh, light reflection from the sun and uh, therefore will drive up temperatures. Um, 
And as that happens, the pole and the equator's temperatures equalize, slowing the streams that move through the ocean, which can lead to ocean oxygen die-off. Um, because the water, the warm water, doesn't get reoxygenated um, as the, these uh, temperatures uh, slow down between them. And that's the thermal circulation. The jet stream is the same except in the air. So um, the, the first set of uh, vulnerable areas are described here. The coral reefs obviously affect the health of the seas. Um, and so if these go, you're going to have a warming effect. How much warming effect? So there are different people have different opinions about this. So in one case, we've got a half a degree of temperature change if Arctic winter sea ice completely melts. So we can assume 0.2. Uh, if the uh, summer sea ice melts. Um, so here are the different effects. There, the CO2 we've already put in the atmosphere, not all of it has um, come to bear uh, because it uh, does things before it goes into a fully uh, maximum uh, heat acting state. So what's already in the atmosphere will continue to warm the Earth another half a degree even if we stop doing everything else. The other one I've got here is the Amazon. So at about two and a half degrees centigrade above where we're at now, the Amazon burns further heating up the world one and a half degree. If East Antarctica is, is set to uh, melt uh, at uh, five degrees centigrade below where we're at now. Now, to give you an idea, the, the ice age was five degrees lower than we are now. So if we go to five degrees above, imagine what that would be like. And the figures right now show that we will go to five degrees above by 2050 if we do nothing. Um, even with the main uh, climate change reports that are from very conservative groups of academics, they're so conservative that they give you the best case scenario. So they're not actually conservative. They're um, radically optimistic insanely optimistic and essentially playing with your life. Obviously, if the boreal forests burn, they have what's so-called dieback, habitat loss, as well as burning, um, that will uh, drive up temperatures, and that's already happening. Um, other issues are global dimming, which is uh, once we get to uh, the point where civilization literally collapsed, which would occur somewhere between 3 and 5 degrees centigrade, we won't be able to feed people anymore, which means we won't be able to maintain our industries anymore, which means that the uh, when we burn dirty coal, it actually lowers the temperature by producing soot. But the soot eventually comes out of the atmosphere, whereas the warming agents, the CO2, stays in the atmosphere for thousands of years. So, it lulls you into thinking you're not heating the planet up as much as you actually are, as long as you keep running dimming agents. So this is what we're going to also be using to try to control this. We're going to be bombing our atmosphere uh, with various uh, substances, sulfur dioxide, which is a poison, or to seed clouds, uh, salt clouds, uh, the ways of making clouds more reflective. So we will be doing these interventions, most likely. Um, and then uh, I'd put here the sea level rise of 55 millimeters, or about uh, two inches. Um, uh, uh, that would occur at two degrees centigrade. Um, must be 55 centimeters. It must be two meters. I have to double check that. Uh, but um, the different points in this tipping structure, uh, atmospheric vapor. So uh, if you uh, pump all the CO2 in, the atmospheric vapor doubles from the heat, giving an experience to, uh, of another degree and a half of temperature rise. So if you add all of these things together, you end up with about 8.7 uh, uh, degrees of uh, rise. And um, so if, if, if these are excessive figures, some of them are much more guesstimates than others. Like to assume that the Amazon by itself burning down would raise the whole planet a degree and a half, equivalent of all industrial activity since we began. Maybe that one's uh, uh, too aggressive a figure. Um, so this is the um, International um, Plenary on Climate Change for the uh, United Nations. 
and um, in this case it shows us that uh, the rate of warming that's going on today and what's likely to happen in the future but the point is that it's extremely uh, optimistic there is this tipping point that occurs at around two degrees um, and the only way we're going to get to two degrees is to convert over to solar and renewable energy today give you some hope here uh, we see that uh, California for example produces 29% uh, renewable now um, as I think I mentioned before Elon Musk said a hundred square mile array of solar panels could provide all the energy the United States needs today so that's one part of the problem but if we simply mask the problem by spraying the atmosphere and converting over to solar the other problem which is protecting our biodiversity and our ecosystems is still forgotten and we have to move from a uh, resource intensive lifestyle to a more sustainability lifestyle so how can you have a lot of growth if you have a, a fixed amount of resources that you're uh, using which are sustainable or renewable in that case the growth has to come in uh, in human capital not in getting a new Lamborghini but maybe getting uh, you know uh, uh, going to retreats or getting better education or participating in some kind of arts uh, or uh, rodeo, whatever you might like to do. Uh, there are ways to get human service value addition can continue to grow. So the problem uh, also we have to ask about is, well, what about people that climate change deniers who want to continue to use uh, a polluting fuel? So what I suggest is that we have an approach of sort of shunning these states and people. So each community should adopt a carbon-free goal. The carbon-free goal should be probably within the next four years. Um, uh, we may already have reached a point where we will have made the planet uninhabitable. Uh, now, there are other things that can go wrong when you have civilization collapse, which will happen at somewhere between three and five degrees. Um, now, it's possible we could hold it down by spraying the atmosphere, but that could create other consequences. And if it, uh, but the problems in civilizational collapse, one is this thing about global dimming, where all of the dirty pollutants we have now stop going in the atmosphere. Planes even reduce global warming temporarily, but they're putting, they're warming the planet up long term. But short term, they spray these trails that are reflective. Um, and so, the, if the plane traffic stops, so the functions of civilization stopping. One part is global dimming, which could have up to two degrees of impact on. A temperature if it if all human activity stopped uh, and then the second uh, is our nuclear power plants and nuclear power plants are not designed to simply run out of power if they run out of power they will melt down and if there's a civilizational collapse there would be 450 uh, Fukushima's or 450 bubbles all releasing radiation now you can all, you can look at all sorts of trend lines. So the main trend line a lot of people use is the Arctic ice, which is dropping to zero rapidly. Uh, certainly, it'll be ice free in the winter soon enough in the next four years, five years, uh, and then it'll free in the summer five to seven years after that, or sooner. It could be in the same period. It might be in five years we lose all the summer ice. Um, sustainability issue. Um, is a question of can we sort of shut down this uh, global uh, capitalist system of uh, consumption and move more towards local control of resources so could each area like Portland or San Francisco could the people who live here be the people who are running the factories and the production for the area and could we target reducing a population needed to do production and work on a uh, work reduction program in uh, uh, harmful occupations and consider this a global climate emergency uh, and I will post I have here I will make sure in the resources that I have the videos that detail some of the more gruesome aspects of human extinction so one area to graph our demise is by looking at sea ice another area is to look at species so I was looking at one, uh, uh, you know, normal scientific website, um, looking at uh, species loss at more than three degrees centigrade, and uh, it's 67% of insects and plants 
are going to be lost if we go to somewhere in the neighborhoods of five degrees. So uh, this means we can't grow food anymore. I've read agricultural uh, periodicals dealing with how uh, 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 corn and uh, uh, and wheat uh, lose their um, their protein content, their nutritional content, and their yield goes down as temperatures go up. One thing we could do, if we is to get uh, renewable energy powering our houses and uh, use electric vehicles for travel, and then to advocate to move our electric grids to be 100% renewable based. So in some states, this will be less of a magic bullet than others. So in California, we have 39% that is not CO2 based in our energy mix. So, uh, and uh, the uh, electric car is about two to three times as efficient. Um, so <clears throat> I reduce my uh, impact by 80 or 90%. And if I can move the state to get to more and more non-carbon based, but our state is mainly uh, natural gas. So even nuclear, if it's a clean nuclear, such as a thorium plant, is preferable to a carbon-based system. Um, so I did an analysis of the vehicles. Uh, there's a $10,000 credit this year in California, 7,500 uh, uh, federal, 2,500 state. Uh, next year it drops to 3,750 federal. Um, and of course, the Tesla Model 3, in my opinion, is by far the best uh, uh, purchase but it's not available yet in the basic model. And the, the long-range model includes a luxury package. Uh, they have a, a good leasing program, and you will save several hundred dollars a year in gas. So if you can save 2000 a year in gas, you're driving a lot. Um, then uh, the payments, monthly payments on the lower guy, that might be 700 a month in payments, uh, plus, you're getting a $10,000 rebate, so it's really closer to 500 a month in payments. Um, so if you're spending a lot on gas, this thing is going to cut your gas bill uh, by two-thirds, uh, most likely. Uh, maybe even three-quarters uh, for electrical use. Um, so for 100 miles, the typical cost for charging at home uh, would be something like... Uh, 22 times 15 cents, uh, which is about uh, $3 and 80 cents. So it's about, uh, and so that, and that's what it's gas uh, miles, uh, MPGE equivalent is. It's MPGE equivalent is around 120 miles per gallon, 130 on the Model 3, 120 on the Model 3 LR, which has two engines and it's four wheel drive. And it's a phenomenal piece of engineering. Uh, for this year, the best thing to do would be to get the Chevrolet Bolt. Um, but the Tesla is more than a car. It is a uh, advanced uh, computer system. It's almost like an Android. Uh, plus, you can put, I mean, almost like a computer. Um, I don't mean Android like the phone. I mean like an Android. So uh, it has much, much more advanced software and capabilities. It also has a biohazard mode to protect the air in the car. So the Chevrolet Bolt, I found a Nissan Leaf used for 12000 uh, So a used Leaf uh, might not be bad. Um, I don't know if I have all the details on these cars for you right here, but I think I do somewhere here. Let's see, where's the car info? Yeah, so I do have in this uh, analysis uh, information on these vehicles, including range. Um, so that's there for your uh, perusal. Uh, I highly recommend looking into getting an electric car as soon as possible and making sure all your friends do as well. And we produce it with renewable energy. It's not that important whether we're using a lot of electricity uh, by, uh, in other words, another approach would be to create a complete transport system, a mass transit system. That would be the most efficient per person. We have this amazing computer technology. We should have fantastic mass transit. But if we can convert to 100% renewable energy, I don't see that it's a major, uh, the major issue, whether people are uh, pottering about in vehicles that are electrically powered or in mass transit vehicles. So, recommendations. 
So we need to not only uh, convert within the next four years to a renewable energy-based system globally, we also have to protect our ecosystems and biodiversity and nurse these systems back to health. It needs to be, uh, uh, without that, we're passing the same problem we have now to the next generation. So yeah, we'll live through it if we don't tackle the problem of protecting our ecosystems and nursing them back to health. Um, and, we need, and, and to some extent that involves changing our values from consumerism to participating in a great society, great civilization, advanced and virtuous civilization. Um, and um, the problem is that there's many forces of society that send tripital to push us away from each other. Uh, cell phones, so you uh, communicate with your friends. Long distance, people travel long uh, distances to their jobs. They move away from their friends and family. They become physically atomized. They stay in touch with social media. Uh, but it's a dehumanizing experience because it's really two computers interacting with each other with two humans on the end. It's not the same thing as people in direct contact. Um, oh, uh, so we need centrifugal forces, forces that pull communities together. Uh, that is my view. And traditionally, societies, people had roles in society. The, uh, you know, the shoemaker, the people involved in agriculture. There were rituals. There were uh, harvests. Uh, there were dances. There were songs. And um, and how do we uh, create something like that for the new digital world? Um, and so there's a certain satisfaction we get here when we look at my previous work, which is dealing a lot with the global geopolitics and the outrages that the uh, Western, in particular, it could be any great power, but in particular the Western intelligence agencies in conjunction with the large corporations have conducted on every developing country in the world, treating the world like a big imperial risk board instead of real human beings. So we can get rid of uh, giving money to the oil companies. The oil companies are lower than Auschwitz. If they know what they're doing, they're not gassing just the Jews. They're gassing the Jews, the Buddhists, the Muslims, the Christians. They're gassing every animal. They're gassing God's creation to make money short term. Uh, so they really must be eviler than the devil himself uh, or um, are hopefully rapidly planning their own transition. And you can do this by generating your own renewable energy. Um, and with an electric car, you don't have to patronize the, uh, the uh, entire gasoline system. Build your own stuff at the community level. We have 3D printers, smart machines. We can build our own stuff. We don't need to be importing from overseas uh, with robotics. And uh, uh, so you, know, you need some metals. You need various textiles. And you uh, create products. And they're high quality, you don't have to build obsolescence into them like we do now. Like right now, if my sink breaks, the plumber told me I had to buy a new sink kit. So I threw out this entire sink kit to get one washer. And all we're really asking people is to change your behavior to avoid mass human extinction. And the links that are going to be in this document, if you go through them, you will be convinced that we are in potential danger of uh, civilizational death within four years if we don't act, because it may not collapse in four years, but we will have put into motion this hothouse effect. It's a set of dominoes of all these different, there's supposedly 69 feedback systems like the Amazon, the boreal forests. Uh, there's I, I didn't talk about phytoplankton, but we've lost half of our phytoplankton uh, which, if, if we could literally have less oxygen in the air than humans require to be conscious. Right now we have about 20% oxygen in the air. What if it drops to 16%? That's technically in a low cognition. In other words, it, you're, it, it'll make everyone stupid. Um, and the message I would make to religious people uh, is that the devil is corruption. The devil is pollution. Therefore, the pollution is satanic. Uh, this pollution is man transforming God's creation into hell. So if we pet transform the whole world into hell, we will have given the domain, uh, you know, I know that there's something that the devil already has dominion over the world, but if, there, if, if you believe in some sort of a struggle between good and evil, you will have handed the world over to the devil. Uh, and um, imagine uh, adopting an attitude where that doesn't matter. Um, 
and how I poetically interpret that, 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 that there's something diabolical and satanic about transferring the earth into hell, uh, is that I consider Lucifer to also be a symbol for our own dark natures, giving into our most base selfish desires. That's what's got us into this bind, is satanic thinking. And therefore we can say that Rex Tillerson is responsible for not only in the gassing not just the city, but mankind and creation itself. So I would suggest, and this I'm not sure is required, but I would suggest we consider nationalizing the billionaires' assets in our communities by simply devolving all the, you know, if there's local property that it should be thrown back into the kitty, whether through buyback or coercion, and then distributing out those community resources to the citizens of the area in some kind of a um, competitive framework. Um, and so what I describe here is about um, local production with employee ownership. I consider that very important. Um, so those are some of the key issues. Uh, make a plan for, e for your local government to convert to renewable energy. Why not use a bond? Uh, we could have groups like retiree groups, uh, uh, employee stock ownership programs, pensions, investing in uh, renewables, Renewable bonds or in industries for California, New York, areas that are modern developed and areas that are slightly less developed like Chile. So I would suggest that California, once it re converts itself over, it adopts both a correspondent in the, in the second tier like Chile and in the third tier like Bangladesh to help them convert as well. Um, because these poor areas are going to need help. And of course, you could just do it through the UN, but you could also match off more prosperous areas uh, with expertise and uh, capability to help developing areas. So those are some thoughts on this very serious problem, which is uh, we are facing human extinction. Uh, and there is a group called Extinction Rebellion operating in England, and a salute to... Uh, the progressives in our Congress, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, for one, for having a Green New Deal with a carbon free by 2025. I think if we get behind that, we probably would be all right as well. And remember, as far as the conservatives, the people that don't want to cooperate go, we simply isolate them. But we will have to deal with the military issue, which is if we could take military funds and instead put them into renewable energy, we could have the money to do this. Uh, and uh, the militaries also use a lot of carbon fuel. Um, so there are some issues about uh, reprioritizing. Uh, my name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.